so adding real numbers. Let's try to kind of move through this so you get lots of time for homework today. Um, real numbers, we know that's any number that we can physically put somewhere on the number line, either as a decimal approximation or as a you know, integer, things like that. What we're talking about today is some of the rules that allow us to do what we do. And some of these may seem to be a little trivial, but later in the chapter I'm going to add some more rules. And I just wanted to introduce a couple of them today. Um, we have two rules. Would you agree that when you add zero to anything, you get the same thing back again? Okay? So when we add zero to anything, we get the same thing back again. Therefore, that is called, when the number doesn't change, we call that identity. All right? It's not like identity theft. The identity stays the same. So if you see what you start with is what you end with, Hannah, that's an identity property. So just kind of remember that. If things knock each other out, they are called an inverse of each other. And so here we have three and negative three knocking each other out. When you add them together, they cancel each other out and go to zero. So that's called the inverse property. Okay? Very straightforward. Two properties. We're going to use those, and I'm going to build those. And over the course of the chapter, you're going to end up having about 15 to 16 properties. So these are just the first two as we begin. We've learned before when we add things together, and some people have had a challenge with this in my class in years past, you have no problem saying positive 4 plus positive 2 is positive 6. But at some point in your career, someone brought the idea of negatives in. And if you add two negatives together, what should you also get? Yeah. Another negative. Okay. So when you're adding numbers together, and they're both the same sign, you're always going to keep the sign being the same. That was fine and dandy, and then th people threw in subtraction at you. And they said, okay, that's fine, I can do this. Well, 4 minus 2 obviously is 2, because that was a simple subtraction problem, and you guys knew how to do that. But then you, someone asked you at one point, well, what is 2 minus 4? And then you have to start thinking, because some people like to say, well, is it okay if I write it this way? Can I change the minus to plus a negative? Is that okay? Should be. And so we think of this subtraction problem as an addition problem. We say, okay, which one's the number that's further away from zero? Well, in this case, the negative. So you add them together. Okay, we got those two. And that's going to now give you negative two. And so as we think about both of these, it's going to give us negative two as an answer. So the idea would be subtract the numbers and whichever sign is larger is your answer being negative 2. For example, we got a bunch down here just to look at as samples. So there are different signs, so subtract. What's 5 minus 3? 2. The larger one's negative, so the answer is negative. Why? Question. Okay. Next one. They're different sign, so we subtract them. 5 minus 3, once again, is 2. But here, the larger sign is what? Positive, so the answer is positive. And I'm going to put a plus there and ask you to put a plus there on your homework tonight because that is going to tell you that you actually thought, oh, which one's larger? And when you answer the question, which one's larger, you either put a plus or a minus, which then it lets you know, oh, I actually thought through that idea. All right, next one. Are they different signs or are they the same sign? Same sign, so you just add them together, and the answer takes the sign of both of the numbers, so it's negative 8. Same sign, different sign. Different, so 23 minus 12, 11. Which one's larger? 23, so it's negative. Now, we need to pause for a second. Tonight's homework is not an exercise in can I punch my calculator well. It's a great way to check, but that's not accomplishing our goal. Our goal is to kind of learn the mental methods for doing this. So if you've got to jump to your calculator here in every single problem, will you get them all right? Yes. Is that our objective? No. Okay. Next one, what do you think? Talk me through it. Same sign, different sign. Different. So what do we do? Huh? 45 minus 4. 
45 minus 11. Okay, so if they're different signs, you subtract. Just put a reminder out here. If different signs arrow, then subtract. That may help us remember that. And you said 45 minus 11 is? Plus 34. Plus 34. He said plus, so I know he identified which one was larger. All right, last down here at number six. Negative seven plus negative 11, they're the same sign. So what do we do? Add or subtract? Add, okay. So add them together and you get 18. And it's, they're both negative. So we get negative 18. All right, really straightforward, nothing fancy. Going from there. Okay, little review. If you see the word evaluate, what do you think? Evaluate if x equals what? All right. So replace the x with the parentheses. And in that parentheses, we're going to stick negative 5.1. It looks like they're the same sign. So I'm going to add them together. 5.1, 3.9. I come over here. That's a 0. I carry the 1. I get 9.0. And I need to realize that they were both negative. So Jocelyn, that means my answer is negative. Straightforward, hopefully. Very simple. Just a little review of the basic order and facts and operations. Okay, let's flip her over. Have any of you seen the movie, the original movie, The Matrix? Just a couple of us, okay. A number of years ago, it's quite a while now, um, there was a movie called The Matrix. And The Matrix was the idea that we were not living in a true reality. And it was kind of messed with your head kind of a movie. Um, and if you're a sci-fi fan, you might enjoy watching it. Um, but it had the premise that we were living in a reality that actually wasn't the real thing, and only people who understood The Matrix of the world could figure out how to live and how to successfully be in the world. And a matrix is a way that we organize data. And supposedly, they said the entire world was broken into a binary matrix. And binary is a very simple way to say ones and zeros, like a computer. That's how a computer thinks at the very base level. And they said that if you can manipulate the matrix, then you can manipulate how things are re appear and what things happen. And at the end of the movie, the leading character learns how to manipulate the matrix, and he dodges bullets and saves the world. And that's kind of the big end picture of the whole thing. So if you're going to watch it, sorry, I just spoiled the end for you. But not a big deal. Anyway, as we think of a matrix, we use it to organize numbers or data. Now. What we're just doing right now is introducing that in a matrix. The whole concepts and how we manipulate them is much later down the line in terms of our math skills. But I want you to understand some basic ideas. Matrix in plural is called matrices. Um, each spot in the matrix, this one, that one, each one is called an element. And an element is named by row and column. And you always say the row first and the column second. So for example, in this matrix here, there are how many rows? Three rows and how many columns? Two. So we would call this a three by two matrix. And you often say, oh, the size of it is three by two. We don't say three times two. We just think of it as three by two. And it's written one of those two ways. So a matrix is called and named often by its size. Now, you may only add or subtract matrices that are the same size. Okay? If I want to find out how many number of M&Ms I have in my jar, I have 10 M&Ms in this pile and 10 Jolly Ranchers in this pile. I can't add them together. 
that they're not the same. They would have to have M&Ms in that pile and M&Ms in this pile. So we can only have matrices that are the same size. So look at our matrices here. Is this matrix the same size and dimensions as our second one? Yeah. They're both three rows and two columns. So we can add them. So here we go. All you do, you're going to kind of make a bigger matrix. And we have to think the first element, top left corner, plus the first element in the top left corner. Then we kind of space over, because there's a blank space in between. Then we're going to say negative 3 over here plus negative 4. What gets added to positive 4 down here? Plus 6. What, it, what gets added to this negative 6 in the red box? Plus 6 again, okay. What gets added to the 1 in the bottom corner? Plus 5. And to the 0? The negative 5. Alright, so let's take a look. That's our matrix, so let's add them together. 2 plus negative 8. What do you think? Negative 6. Negative 6. Thank you, Christian. Alright, negative 3 plus negative 4. Somebody else? Negative 7. Uh, I like that. Okay. 4 plus 6. I can do that one. Negative 6 plus positive 6. Zero. Pause for a minute. What property says negative 6 plus positive 6 equals 0? If you're not sure, flip it over. What property? Inverse property of addition. Alright. 1 plus 5. I'll do that one for you. I'll take the heat. 6. 0 plus negative 5. Negative 5. What property says 0 plus a number is that same number? I heard a couple of people say identity. Good. All right, so just a little review there of why they are what they are. All right, slide into the bottom. The first question is, are these two matrices the same dimensions? What do you think, Dylan? Okay, what dimensions would you say these are? How many rows does this first one have? Two rows, so this is a two by in how many columns? Just by one, because we're looking at just this matrix. I kind of confused you there. Just with that matrix, two rows, one column. So, no big deal. All right, so here we go. What is 4 plus negative 14? Can someone help me there? Negative 10. Negative 10. Now a little harder. One third plus negative 4 thirds. Can you add those fractions? First time we've had fractions in here. You can only have fractions if they have the same denominator. Do they in this case? Yes. yes. So add the numerators. 1 plus negative 4 is how much? Negative three-thirds, which is okay. negative one. Whoops, off the screen a little bit. All right. Hopefully that's fairly straightforward. Most of